Hey everybody, it's Andrew Brown and welcome to the start of our journey and we're asking the most important question first, which is what is Terraform? And I just wanna tell you that I'm on screen now, uh, but I'm gonna vanish here shortly and stay out of the way so that you can see the full content. But I just wanted to know you to know that I'm here with you the entire way, okay? Uh, so the Terraform Associate Certification is a specialty certification in Terraform. Terraform is a technology produced by HashiCorp uh, and it's specifically for infrastructures of code. And it's a declarative infrastructure as a code and it's a cloud agnostic infrastructure as a code. We will dive into all of this in great detail in the introduction section. And just notice that I put an asterisk there on declarative uh, because uh, there is something special about Terraform that we will uh, discover. If you are considering the Terraform Associate, then you most likely are looking for a DevOps role. Uh, you want to automate infrastructure or writing scripts. Uh, you want to work with multiple cloud providers, um, or you know you enjoy designing, iterating on end-to-end -end infrastructure lifecycle. So if this sounds like anything that you are interested in, uh, then you would probably want to take this certification. I want to tell you that Terraform is one of the most in-demand skills for DevOps roles today. Um, and it's becoming quickly the industry standard just because it is so flexible and works with all providers uh, and goes beyond a lot of these other tools. And the Terraform Associate exam itself isn't that difficult, uh, but I would say that the concept of learning Terraform is a bit tricky because uh, you know it's not something that you can just go do the lecture content uh, and, and do the lab content. I had to do a mix of it. Uh, so in this course, you'll see me do lecture lab, lecture lab, because I'm trying to uh, solidify the knowledge as soon as uh, we do that. This is not the format that I use for my other courses. It's just because with Terraform, it requires patience. It is a, a sicilical learning process to understand. So just uh, stick with it. And by the end of it, you will be really good with Terraform. Uh, you know, and so that's that there. So let's talk about our multi-cloud roadmap. I'm gonna get out of the way so we have a little bit more room. Um, and so, you know, what I would recommend uh, is that you start with an associate certification. So I'm just getting my pen tool out here, uh, if I can get it here. Here we have uh, the Google's ACE, um, the cloud engineer, or maybe some level of AWS uh, um, associate certification. I personally think the SysOps is the best pairing for uh, Terraform or the Azure administrator uh, if you're going for Azure. And quite possibly learning uh, more than two would be very beneficial, but of course, whatever your primary provider you're using is where you're gonna benefit with uh, Terraform. And you really should learn this stuff before you do Terraform. It is super hard to learn both cloud and Terraform at the same time. You should have that foundation before you tackle onto Terraform. And so there's a lot of different paths for multi-cloud. And just to kind of give you an idea of all the different ways you can go, um, you know, you can go from associate to either vault and to the vault professional if you're uh, looking at a security background. Uh, but it's very common for people to get the Terraform and then go for uh, vault afterwards. Uh, but, you know, it's up to you to which path you want to take. How long do you have to study uh, to pass this exam? Well, uh, it's a spectrum based on where your background is. So let's take a look at beginners first. So a beginner to me would be someone that's never written IC. Uh, they have not previously focused on automating infrastructure. They might may not hold an associate level certification. So you're adding those additional hours or trying to uh, make up the difference. You could be looking at 30 hours or more. Uh, if you're already experienced with um, writing IAC, but maybe just not Terraform, maybe you know Azure Bicep or CloudFormation, uh, you already work in DevOps, uh, you already comfortable writing scripts, and you hold associate level certification knowledge of you know a major cloud provider, then you're looking at something like 12 hours. Um, but you know, if you're looking for a general study guide somewhere in between, I would recommend between one to two hours a day for 14 days, and you'll be in a really good place by then. Uh, you know, what does it take to pass this exam? Well, there is a lecture content, and I have a lot of it. Um, you know, the thing is, is that the exam itself is very practical. Um, it's not like uh, AWS, AWS's exams where it's very um, uh, theory-based at a conceptual level. This one is very much how do we use this technology uh, and so the lecture content is there to really support the lab content. And you really, really need to do the lab content uh, because that's the nature of this exam. Um, and to make this a lot easier, uh, I do recommend taking some practice exams. 
we have a free practice exam and we also have uh, uh, many more practice exams. Uh, if you take all these practice exams and you've done the labs prior to that, you're gonna be in really good shape uh, to pass. In terms of the content outline, um, I can't remember how many domains. Well, we'll see how many there are, but we have one. So understand infrastructure as code. So IC concepts, understand the purpose of Terraform, understand Terraform basics, the use of Terraform outside core workflows, interact with Terraform modules, use the core Terraform workflow, implement and maintain state, read, generate, and modify configuration, and understand Terraform cloud capabilities. So yeah, nine domains. Uh, something that's different about uh, the HashiCorp certifications is they do not provide distribution of domains. What do I mean by that? Well, they're not weighted, right? So it's not like uh, we know that uh, like eight is um, going to have a, a particular weighting that's higher, but we can look at the exam guide uh, outline to see generally how many questions we probably would. So we could kind of infer our own weighting, but they do not provide it. So I would just say it's not known, but we'll take our best guess when we look at the full exam guide outline. Where do you take this exam? Well, you can take it in an in-person test center or online from the convenience of your own home. I do believe that uh, the test center that HashiCorp is using is PSI um, or PSI online and understand that this is a proctored exam. So if someone is supervising you, watching you, monitoring you as you take the exam so that, you, uh, that there's no funny business happening, there's no cheating uh, and to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, that you gain gain uh, that knowledge in a reputable way. So just understand that. In terms of the grading, you need to get about 70% to uh, pass or around that. It uses scaled uh, scoring. Uh, is it possible for you to fail if you got exactly 70%? It might be. So always aim to uh, get higher than 70%. Um, and so I always say aim for a target of you know 10 to 15 above what the score is. Uh, if you're getting that on your practice exams, uh, then you're going to be in good shape. In terms of the response types, uh, they don't tell you exactly how many questions there are, but uh, I've always observed there's 57 questions. Um, and so, you know, based on that calculation, I feel that you have 70, 17 questions you can get wrong. There are no penalties for wrong questions. So always answer your questions. Do not leave any blank. The format of the questions is multiple choice and multiple answer. Uh, and then sometimes you get a fill in the blank. So type a one uh, word answer most likely it's going to be a command, right? So, or a flag for a command. Uh, so you definitely have to know the technical components of Terraform, okay? The duration of the exam is one hour. So that means you get about a minute to answer per questions. The questions are very short format. So it's not like you have to read a ton of text to figure out what's going on. Uh, the exam time is 60 minutes. The seat time is actually 90 minutes. So when we say seat time, we're referring to the amount of time you should allocate for the exam. Um, so that means that would include things like time to review the instructions, uh, show, uh, uh, show the online proctored your workspace to make sure there's nothing uh, going funny on with uh, your environment, uh, read and accept the NDA, uh, complete the exam, provide feedback at the end. And I'm going to tell you, you really do want to uh, get for your exam much sooner than you think because it is a very stressful process and things tend to always go wrong when, uh, <laughs> when, you, uh, when you don't show up early enough, okay? So just make sure you do that. Uh, if you do pass this exam, it's gonna be valid for 24 months. So that's uh, two years before recertification. Uh, and the last thing I just wanna talk about is, um, well, maybe not the last thing, I got two more slides here for you, but this course is gonna be designed around the 1.6.0 specification of Terraform. Um, and even when I'm making this uh, course as of today, 1.60 is an alpha, this will be in the future, so 1.60 will be out, but I like to try to give you more knowledge in the future, um, even if it's not an exam, just so that you are prepared uh, and this course does not go stale uh, sooner. Uh, Terraform is always incrementing uh, in versions, so you know when you study, you always wanna go back three minor versions. Since I'm showing 1.60, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if you were, let's say you're on 1.54, You'd want to do one. You want to make sure you know Terraform for a range of versions, going a few versions back. Uh, and so, you know, I will be showing you things that may be deprecated, but are still, uh, but might still be in use based on the version that people are using. Uh, so just understand that. Um, and again, you know, these these certifications are 
or the Terraform certification is heavily dependent on your practical knowledge. So if you are taking the time to apply the knowledge, uh, th this version dif differencing is not going to make a big difference. Okay. Um, so just make sure, you know, you put the time in with the labs. Um, now, this is the third version of the certification. And so I just kind of want to tell you that uh, not a whole lot has changed between version 002 and 003. Uh, the, one of the big differences is they changed the badge design. Why? I don't know. Uh, is it better? Who cares? Um, but uh, it is a, a different looking badge. Um, one thing is that there were superficial name changes to the outlines of the domain. So basically all the domains are the same. They just kind of uh, did some tweaks there. Um, they did kind of cut some content out in the, uh, the like first, uh, first, uh, first two domains because those ones were just more general concept knowledge. And so they slimmed those down. Um, I'm leaving that content in this course because I think it's very valuable to know uh, more rounded uh, knowledge there. So you're going to be overprepared for those first two domains. Um, there used to be this thing uh, called provisioners. It's still in uh, Terraform, but the thing is, is that it's just no longer needed to know in the exam. So this is about doing remote execution and knowing all the uh, provisioners. Um, and so, I mean, local execute and remote execute are things you need to learn and definitely something that you will use on the job. Uh, but knowing how to provision and, and use a lot of provisions there is, is no longer a focus there. Um, there's this thing called uh, null resource that we learned about. And now they have a new thing called Terraform data. So that is a uh, evolution of Terraform data. So we'll still learn about null resource, um, but we'll also learn Terraform data where it makes more sense to use. Uh, you know, Terraform taint, ha taint has been replaced with uh, just a flag uh, called hyphen hyphen uh, 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 replace. Uh, on the Terraform plan. And we have a few more others like that. So refresh has a flag. Um, and uh, the thing was, is that when I made this exam the first time, they were already talking about doing this. So this exam is already, um, uh, my, even my previous one is up to date with the current version of o, uh, 003, if, that, if that's <laughs> surprising here. Uh, Terraform workspace is no longer part of the exam. Um, I will still cover Terraform Workspace, uh, you know, if we come across it, because um, I still think, again, it's practical knowledge that you should know. Um, connecting to Terraform uh, Cloud now uses its own cloud block instead of remote block. Um, I believe that we can still use remote block here, and I will definitely test that in the in the um, in the uh, the labs in this course. So you know, it's good to know both of them, but the focus will be using uh, cloud block. Um, we have the lock file. So the lock.hcl files are new. Um, I mean, they weren't new when I made the previous exam, so they were already in there. So again, I already had this content here, um, but I'm just pointing out that um, that's something that they're focusing on uh, within the certification here. Um, you need to know how to mark data as being sensitive. Again, that's something I had in the older exam. Uh, but one major thing is Terraform Cloud has a new UI and it looks like there's a lot more functionality. So in terms of the old exam or a course that I produced in this one, uh, I'm definitely going to have to uh, reshoot all of Terraform Cloud and go deeper into it. There's obviously a few different uh, functionalities that have been added, like the Terraform Cloud block, the Terraform data block. Um, but, you know, for the most part, there's not a whole lot that has changed. So the majority of this will be very similar to the last one, but I'm just touching up and improving uh, lab content where we can and hopefully adding a lot more additional content uh, to expand uh, the Terraform knowledge that I wasn't able to do the first time around. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you're getting yourself into. Uh, but yeah, we will uh, proceed forward to looking at the exam guide.